Hi guys, welcome to this week's video. So this week we're going to build for Yanni in Tabanchi, we're going to build 14 nice shelves. And then also I'm going to join the top for Mr. McLeod, a kitchen top that's going to go on an island. I don't like working with the kitchen tops because it's super wood, ach, press wood. But we get it done. Let me show you. <laughs> So before you get to this week's video, I just would like to ask you, please interact on the video. Or actually, I, I beg you, please comment, like, share. I really would like to grow this channel. And if I don't get any interaction from my subscribers, I'm not going to grow the channel. So please, guys, if you can, if you see your way open, please make a comment, like, Let's see if we can grow this channel and make it something good. Thank you very much. So I made a mistake last week and I want to see how many of you actually noticed it. Or oh, it will be difficult to notice from your point of view. But I've got on these a little bit of a variance. Some of these legs are one or two millimeters shorter than others. I had stop blocks on the mitre saw. So I had a stop block clamped down on the one side, stop block clamped on the other side, stop blocks can't move. So I want to see how many of you are sharp enough to tell me what my mistake was. Stupid mistake. And I made it. And I learned another lesson last week. So I'm going to quickly now take these one by one, make sure I've got these two parallel to each other 100%. And then we're going to start gluing these. But think about it. What did I do wrong? Okay. So one of the jobs I have today is I bought a sheet of 18mm ply from my lumber supplier in Botavo and uh, I need to cut it up for a customer into shelves 470 by 540 He wants 12 shelves and I thought I'm going to get it out of one sheet but I'm not going to be able to I'll only get 10 out of the sheet, doesn't matter how I swap and change them. So I'm quickly going to cut that up and then I'll show you. I'm just going to etch the fronts with Kiat or whatever I have available to give it a nice edge in front of the drawers. This is for a cupboard he's got and he wants to convert the hanging space into packing space. So quickly going to cut that and uh, we'll take it from there. Definitely not the safest cut to make to cut in that direction. So I'm going to get two out of each piece that I just cut with a track saw. But be careful and keep your fingers away from the blade. And of course, set your blade height just to above the height of your stock. It makes it much, much safer. I think I'm going to get a more accurate cut by doing this. The customer wants this 540 millimeters, so I'm going to make it 530 because I want to put a 10 millimeter closing strip on the end to tie the ply edge. So let's cut them quickly. basically the shelf I'm building for the customer. I just cut some cleats out of the off cuts, pre-drilled and countersunk them and then on the end I just put a piece of kiart that I've cut 10 millimeters by 18 millimeters by 470 millimeters that I close off the end grade on the end of the shelf so that presents better. So I've got 
14 of these to do. I only got enough wood to do 10 now. Next week we'll get another sheet of plywood and I'll do the other four for you. Now we've got all of this to assemble. So let's start assembling. So there we are guys, another little project almost done. It's 10 shelves, the customer needs 14. So hopefully next week I'll be able to get another sheet of 18 more ply, then I'll build him another four. It's difficult to believe one full sheet. There's only one piece of off cut that is that size out of a full sheet and I've made 10 shelves. So yes, it's amazing how many wood goes in a small little project like this. I totally miscalculated this one. But that's it, it's done. So guys, another little project that I have to do is I have to join these two pieces of Formica tops for a customer, a Mr. McLeod. It's a gorgeous surname, it rolls off your tongue so nicely. But for Mr. McLeod, I must now join these two Formica tops. I hate working with Formica, it's press wood. Press wood is not very strong. So I thought it's going to be a quick and easy job, but there's some surprises. My plan is to biscuit it all the way, every 150 millimeters apart, biscuit and glue, and then use the little Formica top brackets right in the bottom for the braces and then pull them together. It's not going to be structurally very strong, but it must just join it so that they can put it on the island in the kitchen wherever they're going to fit it. My problem is, whoever cut the one a little bit smaller, his blade wasn't square or true. And what's happening now, it's making a gap all the way of about one and a half millimeters. That looks horrible. So I'm going to try now with a track saw to just get the one line square so that I can get the joint nice and perfect and closed. I hope I don't ruin this top now. But uh, let's pack out the track saw and see if we can get this thing square. Guys, just to show you what I mean by out of square. It's not much, I hope you can see that. But that little gap now shows all the way when I try to join the two pieces. So, and it's all the way from the start to the end. The little gap is all the way there. So this guy's blade was a bit off and that now creates a little bit of a problem. So we're going to try and fix that with a TS-55. So what I've done, I've cut it with a track saw and I don't know if you can see this but this is the joint now. Now that's something we can work with now. Now I'm going to biscuit it, glue it, leave it overnight. Then tomorrow we'll flip it around and put the brackets in. So guys, I've put some biscuits in every 150 millimeters apart, glued it, making sure that I have enough glue in this joint because this chipboard really sucks up glue like mad. So that is glued up and then this morning with the help of my neighbor we flipped the table over. What I'm doing now is I'm just putting the braces in just for some extra security. I don't really like these very much but whatever helps to make it stronger the better so all the way the way this works is you draw two 35 millimeter holes the same as your pocket hole hinges and then I router with a little trim router just a slot from the one to the other this then drops in there and then with a number 10 spanner combination spanner I just then tighten it and it actually just pulls it together to show you what one looks like there is one year that I've actually done already just to show you what it's supposed to look like so that's the idea so I'm putting six of them in here just as an extra precaution because I really don't like chipboard there's no strength in this stuff but we're almost done right, just to give you an idea of how I router the slot with a little trim router I've measured from the center of my router bit to the edge 75 millimeters on my router it will differ on all the routers so I take then from the center of each hole, 75 mil out, make a mark, put my straight edge, clamp it down, and then in very small increments, I make small passes, because this stuff is really horrible on a router bit, 
really eats it out a bit. I just take it in four or five passes down to the level of the hole so that this will then sink in there. So uh, let me show you. So guys that is how I join a tabletop or for my cut top in this case and uh, I really don't like this press wood very much. The joint came out nice and it's very strong but I still don't trust it very much so I just screwed on some braces for the transport. Usually you would do something like this on site where they're going to use it and where they're going to screw it down on the island or whatever where they're going to put it. So. If you have any comments, things I must change, things to make it more sturdy or stronger or whatever. But I think I've done just about everything I can. I've did biscuits, I've used Alkaline Ultra, the very stronger glue I can. Made sure I put enough glue in to soak that um, chipboard. And uh, then put in the clamps like I showed you. So I've done what I can with this I think. But if you have any comments, please leave them. Tell me how I can make this stronger and better. The contractors will, when they're on site, remove the four braces. And uh, I'm just worried about the vibration on the trailer when they move it to site. That it might shake it loose or something. That's why I put the four braces in. And that's how we do it. So guys, I managed to get another sheet from our friend Henny that does the CNC work for us. He had a spare sheet of 18 more ply for me, so I quickly went and collected by him. So now I can finish the other four shelves that I shot on that project there. So thank you any very much. He helped me out a lot. I'll replace this as soon as possible. So I'm quickly going to cut it and then complete the project with the four, four little shelves that short. So guys, that's now 14 of the shelves done for Yanni, and uh, I pre-drilled all the sides for him so that he can just screw it and then I gave him the right length screws and a bit to install them. And then I also made him just a simple little bracket that he wants to hang a ceiling fan on in his roof. So this is another job done. I think I'm done for today. <laughs>